So during the conversation in the sauna, I, I, I shifted it to how Black men in manhood are viewed and defined in America. You can't talk about the man in the family without discussing manhood in our society, particularly the redefining of manhood here in America. One of the major attacks upon Black men during the Jim Crow era was upon his image, and this is still happening today. Because one of the most important things any group of people can do is control the image of themselves. The media sets the tone for the morals, the values, and images of our culture. So let me give you, give you some examples of what I'm talking about. During the enslavement of Africans, white colonists, and slave masters, their wives, and even their children relegated slaves to certain roles. Many of these images were derived from these roles. Uh, one of those roles was called Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom's cabin is considered an American masterpiece. The character Uncle Tom is an African slave who retains his Christian faith and integrity, refusing to betray his fellow slaves at the cost of his life. The story convinced readers that the institution of slavery itself was evil, and thousands rallied to the anti-slavery cause. Southern slaveholders were outraged and declared the work to be criminal, slanderous, and completely false. So how is it that a book that contributed uh, most to the anti-slavery cause should have gained the reputation it has today as a racist work? To address this, we need to look at the image of Uncle Tom. Of all his character traits in the book, what was singled out to highlight his image was his acts of the submissive, childlike Black man. And this image was exaggerated in theatrical productions of Uncle Tom's cabin around the South. Many of these productions showed Uncle Tom as an ignorant, groveling, subservient, childish character and included blackface, blackface minstrels, minstrel shows between scenes to associate these images with Uncle Tom. In this, we see an example of the arena of arts and entertainment being used to redefine the image of Uncle Tom. Then we have the quote, brutal buck image. The brutal buck is a critical image because this image represents African-American men as sexualized beast creatures, lustfully desiring white women. Many cultural critics have noticed that the 1933 movie King Kong is a story about a giant black ape in love with a white woman and how it tapped into the unspoken fear of African, I mean, of, yeah, of African American men's strong sexuality. The image persists and uh, resonates still today. In April of 2008, Vogue magazine had a controversial cover that featured NBA star LeBron James and a supermodel in a pose reminiscent of the King Kong movie poster. According to a report named Reality Television, it said, and I quote, studies have shown that television teaches stereotypical attitudes and preconceptions about people and lifestyles that they would have no contact with outside of watching the way these people are shown by television. Unfortunately, in a time where children spend more time than ever watching television unsupervised, the television becomes the teacher. These depictions of African-American manhood, voiced sometimes by our own men and women, validate racist stereotypes about African-American men. Now, there are three key character traits of manhood that most men agree with and relate to. And so I want to look at the redefining of at least two of them. And that is men as providers and men as lovers. We we'll start with the provider. The provider brings home the essentials. 
This is why it brings a man satisfaction to bring home a paycheck, to put food on his table, to pay the rent or the mortgage to keep a roof over the family. This was the one thing I gleaned from my father that he did well. In North America, much of our concept of man as the hunter and provider was shaped around the 19th century cowboy who pushed westward, digging for gold, and killing buffaloes and Indians and face-to-face uh, -face gunfights. He was fearless and, and he didn't need anyone. He was of the strong and silent type. When the frontier closed, the concept of the great provider reemerged in a world of a man's vocation and professional achievements. Society had made man's work or business the major proving ground of manhood. But there is a danger even here if this is unbalanced and taken out of context. Being a provider and provision involves more than just finances and the essentials of food, clothing, and shelters. Brothers, we fall short when becoming content with just being a man who provides these things or settled upon. Let, let, let's move on. Let's look at the love. This word once defined men who were not only loving, but capable of being loved. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 24, it states, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The purpose of this text is to declare that nothing and no one but God should be closer to a man than his wife. In addition, men are to be different from males in the uh, animal kingdom who mate with their females and move on. Yet, this is exactly how the African male slave was trained to function. Therefore, he had no progressive growth in the ability, skills, and responsibility of being lovers, husbands, and fathers. Out of this dysfunction, we gave birth to the rolling stone, the playboy, the pimp, the player, and the stud. The danger of this position is that it sets the stage for manhood being defined by women and sexual ability. And therefore, men become preoccupied with both sex and women. It causes women and sex to determine the degree of manhood we walk in. It is here some choose to walk in the role of the stud, the player, or the pimp. This is a mindset that relies on manipulating and deceiving the minds of lonely, scared, confused, vulnerable, financially unstable women with low self-esteem. It does not require much of a man to manipulate a woman with those characteristics. As men, we are built to be warriors, hunters, protectors, and gatekeepers, right? So where is the honor and the pride of a hunter who only catches wounded prey? How can you be both a protector and an attacker? These so-called accomplishments mean nothing. Imagine if more men chased after the study and planning skills of Marcus Garvey, or the, the ability to stand in the midst of storms of a Bishop T.D. Jakes, or President Barack Obama, the fearless courage and discipline of El Haji Malik El Shabazz, AKA Malcolm X, or the degree to uh, uh, uplift broken souls like Frederick Douglass, or the intelligence and oratorical skills of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Imagine the impact on our community. And I think it's a great framework and a great place to start. What say you? I hope you enjoyed the ride today. Thank you for spending some of your time with me. Please take a second to like this post, share it with family and friends, and subscribe to this channel for more uh, additional content. And as always, peace and blessings to you and your household.